Early on when I got into politics at age 22 in Nebraska, I was groped at a political event by someone who is not a member of this body and not a current or former office holder. I buried it because I'd gone through a worse trauma in college and tried to minimize it just as I tried to minimize it when I've been touched inappropriately on this floor and in committee by members of this body. And most of you were on the floor when a member who on the mic talked about raping me on the floor of the legislature. That doesn't even get to the rape threats, the death threats, and sexual comments directed towards me on social media. Our policies definitely don't protect staff, and they definitely don't protect female senators. Now that is a state senator Julie Slamia, uh, Slama uh, talking about a great variety of different instances of harassment and assault, both before and after becoming a state senator. And uh, there is a lot there that definitely needs to be looked into. Uh, every woman and in, in, in state senators should not be an exception to this, should be safe and comfortable, able to do their job. And clearly that is not the case. However, she is also just one of a number of women that are making claims specifically about a candidate. Front runner in Nebraska's GOP gubernatorial primary, Charles Herbster, has apparently assaulted, according to these allegations, a large number of women over the course of years from 2017 to this year. The women ranged in age from their late teens to mid 20s at the time of the incident. Eight women as of right now have come forward with allegations. It is possible that as this story is picked up and spread more will potentially. So in in any event, I wanna get to some of the details. Starting with Ms. Slama who says, this is quoted by the Nebraska Examiner. She was appointed to the legislature back in January of 2019. She was in a crowded ballroom at the Douglas County Republican Party's annual Elephant Remembers Dinner that April when she was walking by Mr. Herbster. The news outlet reported that he then reached up her skirt without her consent and touched her inappropriately, which is just, I I can't. We have heard so many instances like this, and I cannot conceive of a person making a choice like this, let alone constantly doing this and then going on to continue to run for office as so many of these people do. This is just the most recent Republican who has faced multiple allegations of either domestic abuse or sexual assault. Like we have to be specific in this video. If you're like jumping into the middle of the video, we're talking about Charles Herbster, not one of the many others that we've reported on. Um, by the way, and he is the front runner to be governor. Another person at that event saw Herbster do this and told the examiner about it. Not that multiple witnesses will be enough to get Republicans necessarily to take this seriously, but to be clear, they're there. The witness and two others say that they saw Herbster grope another young woman on her buttocks at the same event. Multiple assaults just at one event. Six women told the Nebraska Examiner that Herbster touched them inappropriately when they were selling hello or goodbye to him or when they were posing for a photograph by his side. With women saying that Herbster groped them on their buttocks outside of their clothes during political events or beauty pageants. Each woman says that she was grabbed, not inadvertently grazed by Herbster. It was an intentional thing. A seventh woman said that Herbster cornered her privately and kissed her forcibly. And this guy is, as we keep saying, the front runner. He is high profile. He is, in fact, endorsed by this individual, Donald Trump, writing an endorsement. He is apparently a tremendous supporter of America first. And he would be great for, I don't, I don't even wanna read all the details considering all that we know about him, but Trump is behind this guy. And do you think that these details are gonna cause him to retract his endorsement? I hope I'm wrong. I hope he does, Brett, but I kinda doubt it. Just one disgusting detail of this. The former mayor of Omaha, just to give you an idea of what's happening and the other people who are supporting this guy. He inquired, you could look at this on her Twitter. He inquired to see what she was wearing when she got groped. And she tweeted a photograph of what she was wearing when she got groped. He's like, I wanna know more, I wanna know what she was wearing. That thing that like at this point seems like who actually says, well, what were you wearing when you got groped? There are people in Nebraska politics, this sick cabal. And if you're like, oh, you know, there's something you always hear is like, this is a takedown from a, a disgruntled Democratic plant. No, Slama is a Republican, a very pro life Republican, outspoken. 
Like this is on like all of those things that they throw up there as a smoke screen to say, well, locker room talk. Like this guy, according to these accusations, does just start kissing them. Yeah. And regardless of like to dole out an endorsement, shouldn't and usually doesn't come without some level of heavy vetting. Yeah. As to whether the guy is doing heavy petting. And he is. And it doesn't seem to dissuade Trump from giving the old who's got two thumbs and supports and endorses serial gropers, this guy. Exactly. Yeah, they're 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 consistent. Uh, by the way, uh, these particular allegations, we don't know. It's possible he's been doing it to many other women for much longer. Started in 2017. Is it possible that he started to think, well, nobody cares about this stuff. You can get elected and do this, so why not just do it? And by the way, uh, Julie Slama, the, the, the woman that you saw in that video, who is just one again of eight women, she is a Republican. So I know some people would be like, well, why, why didn't you say something immediately? Why didn't you do something? No, but like this is a this is a well-connected, powerful person who is victimizing you. She wants this career. She believes that she should be able to run and hold office based on her merits or whatever. If she says something, who do you think they're gonna believe? Who do you think they're gonna side with? Is it more likely that he will face consequences or that her career is done and that's it? And she's never getting endorsements. She's never winning election as a Republican. I can totally understand that fear. And she's explicitly said on the floor, like, I don't want to be defined by this. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly. the reason she has said, I don't want to be defined by this. I never did. It's yeah. come up. You've asked the question. You're going to get an answer. And guess what? She's going to be defined by this. And that's not that's one of the many things we've mentioned that's not fair to her exactly. and illegal. Exactly. Okay, uh, you know what? Really fast, one more thing. Charles Herbst, like to my theory that he might be like taking lessons from Trump, he says this. They did it with Brett Kavanaugh. They certainly did it with Donald J. Trump. And now they're trying to do it with Charles Herbster. That was not his spokesperson. That was him talking about himself in the first person. So the idea that he might pattern himself at Trump, I think there's something to it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.